The narratives that you are about to see are fictionalized scenarios. Names, characters, businesses, places, events, locales, and incidents are either the products of the author's imagination or used in a fictitious manner. Any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. The Use Case 4 narrative demonstrates public identification of UAS via remote identification services. While the UAS activities over the farmer's market continue, the City of Rome is conducting commercial and emergency drone operations in the area southeast of where the farmer's market is taking place, including a school roof inspection and a cinematography flight near a wooded area for the latest installment of a popular mystery series. Meanwhile, local police and fire departments are conducting search and rescue missions for a child that has gone missing. Max, a town local, is picking up his daughter from school. He can't help but notice several drones overhead and is particularly concerned about a larger UAS passing the school. Max opens a third-party remote ID application on his smartphone and initiates a query about the large UAS. The broadcast remote ID app doesn't give Max the drone operator's contact information, but it does provide basic information about the UAS and its position. Max needs additional reassurance, so he complains about the drone to a nearby federal law enforcement officer. Using the third-party remote ID phone app, the federal law enforcement officer retrieves the information he needs to confirm that the UAS is in fact a legitimate emergency services drone. He assures Max that the drone is performing a medical delivery and there's nothing to worry about. Use case for really focused on what is called remote ID or remote identification of a UAS. From a ground observer standpoint, some person is at their house or they're at a sporting event or something like that and they see a drone fly by and they say, who is that and should they be there? So whether you're a citizen or a law enforcement person, you might want to utilize this technology. Recently, there have been some standards proposed by ASTM on what is remote identification, how should it work, what's required, who can use it, what data do you get back. As part of this use case, we're taking a look at validating the ASTM international standards that have been put forth for remote ID services. In looking at the standards and validating the standards, there is both the broadcast perspective. This is the broadcast that is coming off the drone itself with a set of identifying information for the drone, as well as a network capability that's looking at information sharing of these same broadcast messages amongst other USS in a ecosystem that has information being shared with both USS and if needed, can be shared to the FAA. We demonstrate multiple levels of remote identification of aircraft and using multiple types of technology. One being a broadcast remote ID, which is essentially an aircraft is beaconing, similar to how general aviation aircraft are using ADS-B or using a transponder to indicate their location. This is utilizing off the shelf technology and in this particular case, Bluetooth technology to transmit data from this aircraft that's flying or the UAS that's flying and saying, this is who I am, and this is what I'm doing, and this is why I'm here. A very clear analogy between remote ID and something that already occurs today is that of license plates. License plates provide traceability to an automobile and the user of that automobile for those authorized to get that information. Remote ID is essentially the same type of capability, however, it is in a more digitized manner. This occurs with safe and secure data exchange between the drone itself to the USS or the drone itself to a third party application. This is one of the cornerstones of enabling remote ID and providing traceability to those conducting a particular type of operation. What happens in use case four is that there's other people in the park and they just have regular citizens have their cell phone with them and they see all these UASs flying in the area and they kind of wonder like, why are these guys flying here? So they take out their cell phone that has a remote ID application on it and then they check to see what's going on in this area. Now based on the ASTM standard for remote ID, there's only limited information that's being displayed to that normal citizen. 
the public is able to contact their local public safety entities in order to provide them with the remote ID number based off of the broadcast that they receive. Potential apps from our USS partners that are being created can enable that type of reporting process to a local public safety entity. And for our public safety partners, especially those with elevated privileges that are attained via the FAA, they are able to request further information from the FAA in order to get a holistic set of pictures of the operator and all their associated information that is held within the FAA.